So we're glad to have Jeff Smith from the University of Illinois Chicago, and he's going to tell us about normal bundles of rational curves and separably rationally connected curves. All right. So uh, thanks, Ravi, for the introduction and for organizing this seminar. Um, this has been a, I don't know, a great thing to go to consistently through this uh, very long pandemic. Um, so everything that's original in this talk is a uh, joint work with Izet Joshkin. Um, And uh, uh, everything uh, that I'll be talking about today um, is going to be over an algebraically closed field. And so um, the uh, our starting place. Sorry about this. Okay. Our starting place is uh, um, the world of rational connectedness. Uh, I need to explain the uh, second half of the title a little bit. And so um, the starting definition, or the sort of cartoon of a definition, is that oops, a variety, at least informally, uh, is um, rationally connected. Uh, if there is a way to draw a rational uh, curve between any pair of general points on it. So this is the sort of uh, the simplified, the cartoon version. So you have your variety X and you pick your favorite points, P and Q, uh, oh, a general, excuse me. And if those points are general, uh, you want there to be a P1 between them. And the, uh, the second thing, um, Along these same same lines that I'll mention, uh, a variety is rationally chain connected. Uh, if there is a chain of rational curves through a pair of general points. So you have your variety X, but maybe there's not a way to get from P to Q directly. And instead, uh, the P1s have to go through a series of other points along the way. So um, many of you are probably already aware that this is uh, a sort of simplified version of rational connectedness um, that uh paves over some some issues so there are two issues involved in formalizing this uh the first and probably the uh 
less significant of the, or the, the one I care a bit less about of the two uh, is that um, it might be, if you're working over a countable field, it might be the case that there's a uh, rational curve through any pair of, any general pair of points by coincidence, basically. So like you, you have uh, individual rational curves rather than a family of them. Um, and so the, the fix here is you just define things in terms of an algebraic family. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the second and uh, somewhat more pressing concern uh, is that if you're working in positive characteristic, um, you could have rational connectedness come from uh, some inseparable family of rational curves. And uh, those of you who came to my previous talk at Stanford uh, will know that um, if you uh, allow for sort of covering families to be inseparable, um, you get sort of weird geometric things where uh, you can have a variety of general types that's simultaneously uh, unirational, uh, in this case, rationally connected, and so forth. Um, so uh, we need to fix these definitions or we, we want an alternate definition that sort of will get the good properties we want out of rational connectedness uh, in positive characteristic. So now we have the actual definition. Um, so let's let uh, U be a family of uh, rational curves. on the variety X, uh, or excuse me, sorry, getting ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, X is uh, rationally connected. Um, uh, if there is a family U, of rational curves on X. So what does that mean? That means uh, there's a map, a map U uh, from this space cross P1 into, into X uh, such that the sort of square of this evaluation uh, U2 from uh, u cross p1 cross p1 into x cross x is dominant. So uh, this quickly addresses the uh, issue in one, um, even if you have a, a variety over a countable field, um, you're still going to, uh, you know, if you require a single uh, connecting family of rational curves, uh, you're going to get uh, all the good properties you want. Um, it doesn't address the second problem though. Uh, and so we need a second definition. Which is that uh, X is separably rationally connected. And I'm going to just universally abbreviate this as SRC for the rest of the talk. Um, if I, if this family uh, can be chosen, 
uh, it can be chosen. Uh, with this map U2 uh, smooth. Okay, uh, so these are the actual definitions uh, we work with. Um, rational chain connectedness uh, gets defined likewise, uh, except that instead of a family of rational curves, you have a family of uh, chains of rational curves. Uh, before moving on to uh, you know, properties of rationally connected things, I should ask if there are any questions so far. Okay. So uh, I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the slide with the wrong definitions. Um, and we can start talking about uh, properties of uh, rationally connected and separably rationally connected things. Um, first, sort of historically, uh, these things were all introduced in like the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, and they're basically all due to uh, a mix of Kalar. Uh, Miyaka and Mori. And um, sort of, yeah, uh, one thing that's worth noting is uh, in characteristic zero, uh, these three notions all come together, uh, at least for smooth things. So if the characteristic is equal to zero and X is smooth, uh, then we have that uh, X is rationally chain connected uh, if and only if X is SRC. Um, the uh, separability is, of course, no big deal uh, in characteristic zero. The sort of interesting thing is that you can uh, necessarily smooth out uh, these chains of rational curves. So in characteristic zero, uh, there's sort of no like right notion of uh, rational connectedness because all of these three are equivalent to each other, at least for smooth things. Um, however, uh, in positive characteristic, uh, it turns out that uh, separable rational connectedness is the, uh, the notion that you should be working with, or it's a nice notion. So some examples of you know things that are true for uh, separable rational connectedness is uh, there's this um, a result of Graeber Harris star uh, that if you have a uh, family of rationally connected varieties in characteristic zero, um, that family is going to admit a section, uh, and this generalizes to a positive characteristic, but only for um, for only only for SRC things. So if we have a map, uh, and this map needs to be proper, flat, uh, with uh, with normal uh, SRC fibers. Uh, and B is a curve. Uh, then pi admits a section. And 
this is due to uh, De Jong and Starr. Um, so that, that's probably the uh, best generalization of graver harris star you're going to get to a positive characteristic. Um, second, we have that uh, Chow groups of one cycles. Uh, are generated oh, on the SRC things. Are generated uh, by rational curves. Another sort of property you expect from uh, characteristic zero uh, that you wouldn't typically get with uh, just ordinarily rationally connected things in positive characteristic. Uh, and finally, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put an attribution on this. This is due to Tian and Zong. And finally, uh, if X is smooth in SRC, uh, then H1 of X uh, OX is going to be equal to zero. This is due to Guna loss. And you also uh, avoid the sort of more elementary uh, problems that you can have with, uh, say, rationally connected varieties in positive characteristic where they have, say, non negative Kadir dimension or whatever. Okay. So hopefully this is at least a little convincing that uh, separable, separable rational connectedness is a property that you want to establish uh, for, for varieties and positive characteristic. You, you don't want you know, just rational chain connectedness or uh, uh, rational connectedness if you, can, if you can do better. And so, uh, we uh, want a bunch of varieties that we could plausibly consider uh, to be separably rationally connected. Um, and these are going to be provided by uh, a very unsurprising class of varieties to look at in this sort of talk, uh, Fano varieties. Um, and in the spirit of, uh, yeah, I don't know, making uh, MMP, people, MMP people happy if they are uh, at the talk. I'll talk about uh, Fano singular varieties, uh, even though most of the time we'll also need an additional smoothness condition. Um, so if you have a normal and Q Gorenstein variety, uh, X, uh, it's going to be Fano. Um, if uh, the anti-canonical class is ample. And uh, unsurprisingly, lots of examples of this, um, including you know, the most famous variety of them all. Uh, you, know, you can look at a Grassmannian um, you can choose your favorite homogeneous variety. And then you, uh, there are sort of other like, I don't know, sui generis uh, examples of um, Fano varieties. But typically when I think of Fano varieties, I think of, uh, you know, some homogeneous thing or a complete intersection in some homogeneous thing. And uh, the great thing about Fano varieties is, 
at least uh, from this perspective, is they are chock full of rational curves. Um, so, uh, the basic argument there, uh, goes through, uh, bend and break. Uh, if you have a curve class that's KX negative, um, then you're going to be able to find a rational curve, uh, on your variety that passes through any uh, point on that curve. Uh, but if you have a Fano variety where, uh, minus KX is ample, um, every curve is going to be uh, kx negative. And so you're going to be able to bend and break and find lots and lots of rational curves. Um, so that, that's sort of a cartoon description. Uh, but uh, the uh, sort of uh, useful upshot of all of this uh, is that um, if, uh, Yeah, so I'm um, sorry. Uh, if X is a, a smooth Fano variety, uh, then X is going to be rationally chain connected. Oops. And so uh, in characteristic zero, that tells you everything that you could want, re-rational connectedness of your variety. Uh, because once it's rationally chain connected, you can deform that, you get rational connectedness. Uh, there's no difference between rational connectedness and SRC-ness. Uh, and suddenly you have varieties for which paper hair star holds and all of the good things you, you want uh, happen. Um, but in positive characteristic, it's much less clear what happens. And so uh, a question that uh, I've seen attributed to Kalar, but I'm uh, not sure what of Kalar's it's attributed to um, is, uh, uh, given um, X smooth uh, Fano, Um, is, uh, is X SRC? And uh, despite the, um, you know, importance of SRC-ness to understanding the geometry of these things, uh, it's not super clear uh, how this actually, or how many varieties and uh, how many font of varieties and positive characteristics are actually SRC? So um, first, I remark on all this, uh, which is that the smoothness condition um, is uh, essential. Uh, this is another um, uh, fact due to Kalar. Uh, so Kalar um, gives an example uh, of a singular uh, Fano variety uh, that's provably not separably uniruled and therefore not separably rationally connected. Um, it's some uh, p-fold cover of, uh, yeah, it, it, it's some p-fold cover. Uh, he defines it in the context of, what is it, proving that, um, oh, there are non-ruled Fano varieties in characteristic zero. It's sort of part of a uh, characteristic p-degeneration argument. 
so so how singular uh because your earlier definition still required normal q bornstein uh so is his is Kalar's example normal q bornstein uh i would have to imagine so um i'm, I'm not particularly time. familiar with this example uh simply because uh if not it's not uh, Fanonis makes no sense whatsoever. Um, like the the Q Gorenstein or Gorenstein is just, you know, what what does it mean for minus kx to be ample otherwise? Um, but I, uh, yeah, personally, am not not super sure. So there's a sort of negative answer to a stronger version of this question. Uh, what can we say about the question itself? Um, well, there are easy examples. Uh, you know, uh, PN, that's going to be separably rationally connected by lines. Uh, and likewise, uh, many homogeneous varieties, especially the sort of easy ones you'd expect, uh, are pretty clearly SRC. So, um, so X uh, homogeneous variety uh, with um, so X homogeneous of the form uh, G mod P uh, with P reduced. Yeah. Is also uh, SRC. Um, basically, you can uh, you can cover uh, X by this uh, uh, algebraic group G, uh, which is itself rational. Uh, and if P is reduced, uh, you can um, arrange for the sort of uh, associated like covering map by rational curves uh, to have this uh, smooth uh, squared map. Um, and as a counterpoint, oops, uh, in positive characteristic, uh, If P is not reduced, uh, there are lots of interesting properties of the resulting G mod P you get. Um, but it's still not clear whether there are any examples there uh, of Fano varieties, uh, of smooth Fano varieties that aren't SRC. And so um, these are the sort of you know very basic uh, examples of uh, Fano varieties. Uh, once you get beyond there, um, you're starting to think about your complete intersections of hypersurfaces in uh, Fano varieties. Uh, and there's some things that you can say there. Uh, and so the established work on uh, on Separable rational connectedness of Fano varieties uh, are uh, complete intersections in PM. So this is a theorem that has an independent proof due to uh, uh, Chen and Zhu, and also to Tian, which is that a general. Uh, Fano complete intersection um, in PN is uh, SRC. And uh, both of these proofs are really cool. Um, 
the the proof due to Tian is uh, quite slick. So what Tian does uh, is um, notices that uh, you can say a sort of slightly less strong, but um, ultimately pretty similar statement uh, about general final complete intersections in PN pretty quickly. So that the uh, Tian notices that these varieties are uh, separably unit ruled. And um, once they're separably unit ruled, uh, what he can do is sort of uh, use, uh, show that any obstruction to them being separably rationally connected uh, presents in the form of. Uh, some destabilizing subbundle of the tangent bundle. And so the uh, the tangent bundle of final complete intersections in general are going to be uh, at least semi-stable, um, and so uh, can, you can conclude that they're SRC uh, once they are separably unruled. And then uh, Chen and Zhu uh, actually think about this as a problem in log geometry. Um, I'm not going to write down uh, completely what they say because I'm uh, likely to get it a little bit wrong. Uh, but ultimately, um, they don't just show that a uh, complete intersection in PN is uh, separably rationally connected. Uh, they show that a general uh, log Fano log complete intersection in uh, yeah, uh, with tame boundary uh, is uh, separably A1 connected. Um, so uh, to those of you who have studied A1 connectedness, that probably means something uh, you know, uh, interesting and beyond what uh, is going on with, um, with just SRC-ness. Uh, but uh, there, are some, there are two obvious downsides to both of these proofs. Uh, one, um, it's sort of unclear how they generalize. And two, uh, they um, ultimately don't tell you that much about uh, what sort of curves are actually going to connect two general points on your uh, complete intersection. Uh, seems like a natural point to pause. Have any questions popped up on the Discord or in chat? There's a lot of actually interesting questions. Actually, can you say a little bit about why, um, uh, can you say again the relationship with the stability of the tangent bundle? That's, a, y yes. Um, and actually, I, yeah, I, um, Quite possibly should have talked about the uh, thing I'm going to talk about next before this. Uh, this uh, I guess I'll call it a slide, even though it's sort of like a, a blackboard. Um, but yeah, the significance of uh, this to stability, I'll be able to explain uh, pretty well in probably about five minutes. Fantastic. Cool. And it, has anything else come up? Nothing that needs interrupting you, I think. OK. Cool. 
so um, the uh, way that uh, Tian proves this thing and uh, the way that, um, you know, uh, me and Isette will eventually be able to say something about the rational curves that get involved is this sort of alternate characteristic characterization of uh, separable rational connectedness. And so th this is uh, through the notion of various, uh, excuse me, uh, free curves and very free curves. And so um, let's let uh, let's look at a particular rational curve on some variety. So um, we're not necessarily requiring that X is uh, smooth everywhere, uh, but it needs to be smooth a lot in the image of uh, P1 at least. Um, and we'll say uh, that the rational curve C is just the image of uh, P1 in the smooth locus. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, and what we say is that uh, C is um, free. Uh, if uh, the restricted uh, tangent bundle uh, is globally generated, and is very free if uh, the uh, restricted tangent bundle uh, is um, ample. And so these are vector bundles on uh, on P1. And so the way of thinking of this is, uh, so we, we have that I star of Tx is going to be some direct sum of a bunch of uh, factors. Uh, and we have that C is free if every uh, EI is at least zero and C is very free if uh, every EI is at least one. And so um, the uh, cool theorems that are the, yeah, they, these are, I guess this, this is at the level of like a, a pretty easy theorem, um, is that uh, if X is smooth, Uh, then X is SRC if and only if it has a very free curve. And X is uh, separably unirolled, um, which I haven't defined in this talk, but just means there's a separable covering family of P1s. Uh, if it has a free curve, So uh, going back to Tian's proof, um, right? Uh, he's working with a bunch of varieties that are obviously uh, separably unirolled. Why are they obviously separably unirolled? Well, they're in the they're complete intersections in the Fano range. Uh, you can look at lines on them, um, and uh, the lines uh, always cover them since they're Fano, uh, and I've. I'm currently lapsing on whether uh, you need the generality assumption for this, uh, but uh, you can show possibly with the generality assumption uh, that this is a separable family. And so um, once you have those, uh, if there's sort of an obstruction to um, uh, the there being very free curves on uh, on this variety, um, what it will turn out or what will turn out to happen is uh, 
you have these free curves uh, that aren't very free. And so they have very precisely uh, O sum ends, you know, at least one of them. Uh, and somehow uh, this covering family uh, with at least one O sum n um, is going to give you, uh, I, I forget exactly whether it's like a uh, unexpected section of the uh, cotangent sheaf or something of that ilk. Uh, but something destabilizing will come out of that uh, once once you have separable unirolledness. Okay, so we are uh, three quarters of the way through the talk. Um, finally, time to start talking about uh, some new theorems. So uh, an approach that um, Josh Kuhn and Riedel uh, originally used on complete intersections uh, uh, takes this sort of uh, literal approach uh, and attempts to find like an actual very free rational curve uh, on these complete intersections. And it turns out that you can do this on uh, more general varieties as well. So, uh, a relatively easy uh, you know, consequence of our work that we can talk that I can talk about here. So this one is due to Joshkin and me, uh, is if we're working in a Grassmannian, so we have uh, X is our ambient variety, the Grassmannian, um, and we want Y, uh, to be a uh, general complete intersection in X uh, of hypersurfaces uh, YI, each of class uh, DI times the ample class. Uh, with di at least three. Um, then we have that y is SRC and in fact has uh, a very free curve of the sort of lowest possible degree. So I can put this not in quotes. So what's the lowest possible degree? Well, um, right, we, we have to have that the rational curve um, is, or that the uh, restricted tangent bundle to the rational curve uh, has degree at least equal to the dimension of the space we're working in. Um, and moreover, uh, the um, there needs to be at least one O of two sum and in the, uh, in the restricted tangent bundle so that the uh, tangent bundle of P1 can map into it properly. But the, yeah, the general idea is um, we can sort of move from uh, uh, Complete intersections in PN to complete or to complete intersections in more general homogeneous varieties. Um, the tool that we use to do this uh, is a sort of much more technical thing. Um, as so a result, are, are there any missing hypotheses like um, on the? Uh, like, oh shoot! It needs to be Fano. Okay. Yeah, that's important. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I keep uh, changing the position of where Fano goes in there. Uh, let's make sure that that's... Yeah, I, I think that that's, uh, that's all the hypotheses now. Sorry about missing that. 
great. Now I feel good. I feel okay. happy about the theorem. <laughs> and I so realized, I realized X was final already. So was, what was that? I already knew that X was final. So that's. And I had copied a page uh, specifically for this um, because going to Okay. In the spirit of not spending, you know, ten minutes uh, writing down our actual main theorem, um, here it is. So uh, this is a result that can apply to more general things. Um, so the setup is uh, we have a projective variety. Um, and, uh, you know, it's embedded in PN by some very ample class. Uh, and moreover, uh, is cut out by hypersurfaces of relatively low degree. Um, so here it's specified as K. Um, in most of the cases where we, uh, which we care about, uh, it turns out that it's a variety that's cut out by quadrics. Um, so once we have that set up, um, if we have a rational curve uh, that's on the, that's just a, a rational normal curve in uh, projective space, um, and we have a bunch of general hypersurfaces, uh, each of class DIH with DI uh, at least the maximum of K and three. Um, and we have that this inequality is satisfied uh, then the curve will stay very free um, in the complete intersection. Uh, and as a result, Y and its deformations will be, uh, will be separately rationally connected. So yeah, the, the downside of uh, pasting this in rather than writing it at longhand is um, it, it takes a moment to uh, you know, think through all the hypotheses that are involved here. Um, so let's talk about, you know, what it takes to actually apply this theorem in practice. Uh, so first I should note, uh, this particular theorem is stated in Picard rank one. Um, it fits on you know, one wide ruled page. Uh, you can uh, prove a similar thing in a uh, higher Picard rank. A similar result holds. Uh, but you uh, run into some slightly annoying hypotheses. Um, in particular, uh, you know, the generalization of this condition is a little weird. So yeah, uh, applying this result, um, there are two sort of uh, steps that you, you know, uh, really need to care about. Uh, first, uh, you need for um, your variety to sort of naturally embed in projective space as a uh, as something that's cut out by uh, hypersurfaces of relatively low degree. So you need a, uh, a very ample class. H on X um, such that uh, X in PN uh, is cut out by hypersurfaces of low degree. Uh, 
Um, and second, uh, there's a sec this business about there being a, uh, ra a very free curve on the smooth locus of your variety that's also a rational normal curve in PN. And that's much harder to pull off. Um, you know, uh, th this is the sort of uh, part of things where um, if we were working in characteristic zero, we'd be starting to reach for uh, degeneration techniques and the like uh, right now. Um, but uh, in positive characteristic, many of those techniques don't work super well. Uh, and oftentimes you, or in, in our experience, we've needed to search for these basically by hand. So how, so how do you, is that completely unclear to me how you find one if you're not gonna use the generation techniques? Well, I'll show you what we do for the Grassmannian. Great. Um, so one is, uh, is pretty straightforward. Um, Right, I, I'm not sure how this will how this works on say a general Fano variety, um, but say you know, for instance, if X is homogeneous, uh, there's a projective embedding that's cut out by quadrix. And then uh, two is much dicier. Oops. So right, we need a, a something that's a rational normal curve and very free on uh, our variety. Um, and so the reason that I mentioned the Grassmannian specifically is that the, on the Grassmannian, this rational normal curve takes a pretty nice form. So you're looking at GRKN, uh, we can use the map uh, I from P1 into the Grassmannian given by uh, I of ST is the column span of the following matrix. So the first column is going to be uh, S to the N minus K in a, the top left corner. And this is going to go all the way down uh, the various monomials that range from S to the N minus K all the way to T to the N minus K. The second column, oh, and then it will be a bunch of zeros. The second column will be the same thing except shifted down by one. And then again, a bunch of zeros. And you can see the pattern here already. Uh, we just have a bunch of s to the n minus k's going down to t to the n minus k's uh, in each of these rows until we get to the far right, uh, where in the very bottom right hand corner of the uh, matrix, there's a t to the n minus k. And then above that, uh, we have all the remaining monomials. And so um, this is a, a the sort of thing that um, it's sort of it's a cute process to figure out that this is a rational normal curve in PN. Uh, oh, to be clear, it's a degenerate rational normal curve. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure if that uh, that's clear. Yeah, it, it can be a as long as uh, you know it's a rational normal curve in its uh, in its linear span, uh, you're going to be okay. And so this rational normal curve is, or this rational curve is normal in its linear span, basically because you can pluck out any uh, monomial, uh, monomial of degree k times n minus k you want from a Fluker coordinate on this matrix, right? If you want the uh, 
uh, monomial s to the k times n minus k, uh, you just pick the top k rows. Uh, yeah, that's right. You, you pick the top k rows. Um, if you want uh, t times that, you pick the first k minus 1 rows and then row k plus 1, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and likewise, showing that this is a very free curve is you know, pretty straightforward. And so you can do this uh, on flag varieties, uh, products, uh, some weighted projective spaces, And so uh, it looks like I'm basically out of time. Um, but the, the open question here, that I, I'm not sure how to address is whether, you know, there's a method that uh, sort of generalizes uh, what we see here. Um, oops. Is there a similar way of uh, finding rational curves on uh, on just say any homogeneous variety. Oops. Okay. Uh, can I talk for three more minutes? Oh, go ahead. Yep, yeah, sure. I have a question to derail your three more minutes. You still get three more okay. minutes. Which is, is there some reason, were you suggesting that given a homogeneous variety and you embed it, uh, that it's cut up by quadrics always? Uh, Maybe you weren't suggesting. I, I'm not sure that that's true. Uh, so the, Right. The result of uh, Ramanathan that you know I I think about is that there there is a sort of like I don't know uh, there there is an embedding associated to a homogeneous variety um, that will be uh, cut out by quadrics. I'm not sure if it's true that the that literally every such embedding is cut out by quadrics. Um, I imagine you know someone someone in the audience is likely to know the answer to that one. I mean, apparently no one in the audience on the Asia is there. At least who's on the Discord. That's okay. <laughs> who, who knows the answer? No one. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well. Um, so th this is a paper by Ramanathan. Uh, Although, yeah. I mean, it's true that any embedding, any variety can be cut by quadrics if you just stick in them by super positive things. By yeah, that, that's fair. Um, I, I think you can do a lot better than that with homogeneous varieties. Uh, like I, right? There's always the anti-canonical embedding. I imagine that would be sufficient, for instance. Uh, but in any case, um, just uh, to talk about the the proof of this theorem for uh, a moment or two. Um, there's sort of one. Uh, there are two things about this theorem that are a little frustrating. Uh, one is that this, this condition that di is at least the maximum of, of k or 3. Uh, and the other uh, is that, um, well, yeah, that uh, the varieties you're working with have to be general because you're working with basically uh, the deformations of some specific variety you don't have much control over. Uh, and so I can't really uh, speak to, you know, why these, uh, why both of these uh, things are necessary, um, because I'm basically out of time. Uh, but the, the sort of problem that you run into is uh, the idea of proof. is that um, with the DIs at least three, uh, we can choose, uh, 
uh, we can choose these uh, hypersurfaces yi uh, such that uh, if we think about uh, c as a uh, curve in pm rather than in x um, such that the uh, Yeah, the, the normal bundle of the intersection of the yi. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The, the normal bundle of c to the intersection of the yi uh, in pn um, is basically uh, an, um, I'm going to say, arbitrary. Uh, there are some minor restrictions on it. Uh, an arbitrary quotient of the normal bundle of C to Pn. Um, this comes from uh, C being a rational normal curve in Pn uh, and these having relatively larger degrees than that. Uh, and uh, once you have that, uh, somehow you can restrict that your, your attention to being about uh, C as a curve in X. Um, and uh, you can say the same thing about the normal bundle of C to the intersection of these yi in X. Uh, this method uh, doesn't work if the di are equal to two. And uh, if the di are equal to one, uh, or uh, clearly some approach, some other approach needs to be used. Uh, yeah, so uh, hyperplane sections are just right out. Uh, you can have a, you know, a perfectly nice rational normal curve in a variety uh, such that if you have a hyperplane section containing that rational normal curve, that rational normal curve will uh, suddenly have a terrible, awful normal bundle. Um, and uh, I can say that the method as it is now doesn't work if di is equal to two, uh, but it's really unfortunate that it doesn't work out and it feels weird. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, there aren't examples where like it actually fails in practice. It just, the, the method isn't, power, isn't quite powerful enough as is. So that's another of interaction to go in. Okay, so uh, I guess that's, uh, that's everything.